The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Corn School. Today I'm in Appleton, Ontario, catching up with Paul Sullivan from Sullivan Agro. Sir, how you doing? Good. Welcome to uh, Appleton. And welcome to this awesome cornfield. Tell us about the season out here. Looking good? Crops looking good? Crops are looking pretty good. We've had uh, a good even supply of rain and um, in this particular part of eastern Ontario um, the corn um, is uh, right on pace to, as you can sort of see here today, mm -hmm. tasseling out and uh, yeah, things are looking good. Look good. Well, now I guess the question is how do we keep them looking good uh, through the fall, through grain fill? And I want to talk about, I guess, the power of late season plant health, how we keep that, uh, that plant driving through grain fill. I guess I want to start with uh, talking a little bit about the, the, the bogeyman out there, tar spot. And, you know, obviously that's always part of a fungicide strategy. It's heading east, but you haven't really seen a lot of it here in eastern Ontario. No, we haven't. Uh we're anticipating that we will have it um, potentially later on this season to some degree um, but we haven't had <clears throat> anything uh, of any significance to, to date uh, the odd uh, area where there's been uh, some found on some later corn but no we just don't have the disease yet yeah so you don't have that really at the you know that shining light on your radar from a tar spot perspective but let's talk about fungicide and your late season strategy here paul first of all tell us about this crop it's a good looking crop how do we get here this cornfield was planted the 11th of may um into uh good seabed conditions um good planting job fertility levels are are moderate here we've brought the fertility to where it needs to be side dressed with some some uan in mid to late mid june um, and um, it's right on par that uh, we're tassel and silking right now. Mm. Uh, plant health is is very good, right right to the bottom on it. Um, and um, we have a have a crop that uh, has some some good yield potential, and um, that's the kind of crop that we want to focus on mm. continuing to make sure that that yield potential is is maintained. And uh, this corn still has 60 days to go before it's it's over. Like half the half the season, we're at we're basically at halftime here right now. And uh, so, you know, <clears throat> like any game, you sort of have to say, okay, what are we gonna? What have we done well? What haven't we done as well? What do we have control over? And certainly, one of the things we have control over is helping this corn uh, optimize its growth as it moves in over the next uh, uh, number of weeks. Now, Paul, before we started this conversation, you mentioned, hey, Bern, you know, at this point of the year, I, I tell people, spray your best corn. What do you mean by that? Well, Bern, this particular field is uh, this grower's uh, best looking corn. Plant health is good. Uniformity is good. High yield potential mm -hmm. that's here. So the most uh, potential for ROI is in a really good cornfield. If you've got cornfields that um, have got to this stage, at their at, we need to keep them going and, and, and help finish them off. Yeah. So let's talk about that fungicide strategy. What are you trying to achieve over the next 60 days? You mentioned you want those nice deep kernels and you want this corn to stand, right, and stay green. Absolutely. <clears throat> we'll uh, see that the corn that has the fungicide will maintain plant growth longer and that helps to <clears throat> put more starch into the kernels the kernels are heavier that's where we get the yield it becomes a, in kernel mass and um, that's uh, every kernel is a little bit heavier and that helps it uh, helps helps us get the yield we also will have improved standability if this corn ends up being out a little bit longer uh, than we had anticipated mm. it to be for whatever reason and um, we'll have less cob drop as well, so we don't see as many cobs. So harvestable yield on a high yielding crop. Final question, Paul, and that is about, I guess, ROI. Everybody likes to do the numbers at the end of the day. You know, we take tar spot out of the equation here. Um, what do you tell people about ROI from a return on investment perspective and numbers? Yeah, in our experience, Burn, we saw anywhere from five to 20 bushels, a mm -hmm. little over 20 bushels. Uh, is what we've got in this area. Yeah, so we're gonna make it stand and yield, sir. Um, 
Appreciate you taking some time for Corner School. Always great to have you on Real Agriculture. Well, thanks for, thanks for the opportunity.